Okay, today I'm going to talk really fast about MIDI. We're going to cover three semesters worth of theory of MIDI in 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, uh, there's an octave. What's an octave? Does anyone remember what an octave is? It's a doubling of the pitch or frequency. Correct. Okay, so A440, if we went up an octave, would be A880. Sorry, that might be a little confusing. Okay. 440 hertz, if we doubled it, would be 880. Okay. Octave. Okay, so octave is when the frequency doubles. And you can divide that octave by a certain number of notes. Okay, In Indian music and Middle Eastern music, they divide it by 22 to 28 notes. We divide it by 12. Okay. We have 12 notes per octave. There's a mathematical reason behind that, which I won't go into. But for the most part, it's that the, the frequencies align up. Okay, in some somewhat pleasing ways. Okay, consistent ways. So all the notes used in a particular uh, system, it's called a, a tonal system, is how many notes are per octave, basically. Okay, we have a different tonal system than they do in India. Does that make sense? We divide our octave by 12. We call it an octave of 8. Why is that? Because once you have your tuning system in place, then you pick a certain set of notes you're going to use for a composition, and that's usually called a scale. And the scales are often eight of those 12 possible notes. Does that make sense? Okay. So a so, uh, uh, tuning system is the broadest. Scalar key is what we select for a song. And then any particular time, we play certain sets of notes at the same time. And that's usually called a chord, which is usually three of those notes from the scale. So we go from 12 to usually eight, sometimes five, and down to uh, three at once. Does that make sense? Most of the music we listen to, we play usually one chord per major, or one chord per two majors, somewhere in there. <clears throat> Easy? Okay. Great. Chords are made up. So I'm, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to come back to this other Quizlet stuff later. Okay. Okay. Chords are made up of every other note. Okay. So if I'm looking at this thing right here. Since I'm recording this, maybe I can actually uh, draw some, some stuff on it. If I'm making a note, okay, well, then there's that. Oh, there's always something in there. It's, uh, it's me trying to make it easy here. Okay. If I have a chord and I want to make one, say starting at C, which is what the piano is most basically set up for. Gosh, no, I don't know why C actually looks better. Uh, if I wanted to play three notes with C, I wanted to go every other note, I would pick every other note from the scale. The scale is not all the notes. So all the notes are C, all the, the black and white. Okay. So if we start here, I'll start down here. Here's C, uh, uh, lower A, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 notes, and then we get to the next C. Does that make sense? We pick eight of those notes. Well, on the piano, the white ones are all the ones in C. Okay, so that makes it really easy to play. All the white ones are eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Does that make sense? Okay, so now we want to make our scale from this. So we pick the first note is C. We're going to pick every other note that was in the scale. Okay, so what's the, what's the next note up? After C, E. Right? Okay, and then the next note. Sorry. This is G note. We can play those three notes at the same time and it'll sound good. That's basically what a chord tells you. Questions on that? Huh? If I wanted to play... <clears throat> an F chord? What would my three notes be in the F chord? F, A, and C. And so I could then play F, A, gosh, don't do that. This is not a really good program for doing this. F, A, C. That makes sense. If I played an F chord and a C chord, and I wanted to be lazy, what note would I just keep playing? C, right? I could play C between those two. Okay, so I can have one sound continuous across those two. That creates interest. Because remember, we're talking loops, right? Everything's loops. So if we're going to go C, F, C, F, C, F, we hold that C, C, 
the now we've got one loop going, one that's lasting two bars, and the other ones are changing chords per bar. So we can hold that C across and we'll solve it. Any questions? This it just makes sense. None. Okay. So I want you to now take out that piece of paper, and <clears throat> what you're going to have to get used to is on a chord, the root of the chord is at the bottom. Okay, we call that the tonic or root. Okay, the first chord in a scale or key. And it, we're used to writing letters starting from the top, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. For this music, you got to flip it. So if we go A, C, E, we write A at the bottom, C, and then E above it. Does that make sense? So I want you to write, we're going to go ahead and, and do a little uh, song. And it's going to have an A chord first. It's going to have a uh, E minor. Yeah. <coughs> Just ignore I'm going to say minors and majors for people who know what those mean. For all the other people in there, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say minor, don't worry about it. If I say A minor, that just means A. Does that work? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to write a uh, corporation goes A, uh, then it will go, um, sorry, A, uh, then we'll go E minor, and then we'll go uh, G, C. So what I want you to do, I'm going to do the first one for you. I'm going to say, well, it goes A, C, E, like that. Does that make sense? See if you can write above on your piece of paper the notes that would go above those two, please. Or those three, sorry. Which notes would be above E minor and G minor? It's really handy to have this keyboard out. Logic, unfortunately, is not going to show you all the letters on the notes. So for those of you who have never seen a keyboard much and used it much, to know that this is a B or this is a G can take your eye a while. That's why I put this image up in Canvas for you to reference. Anyone confused? Okay, because I'm just going to write in the rest because we're going to move fast. <coughs> E, what's after, what's above an E? G, G and a e. B, and above a G, e. B, D, oops, e. and C, E. E. Does that make sense to everybody? If we play those three notes at the same time on those things, they'll sound good. When we move between those notes, it'll sound good. I can do things though, I can change things. Say uh, here, I don't want that. I wanna D F A. Let's change the song to feel different. Your chord progression is what's gonna give your song the emotional quality of it. Okay? You can have a certain feeling that it can instill in people. You can do all sorts of things over that progression, but that progression will be underlined. Okay? Just like the pulse and the beat are underlined. Actually, I would even say the beat is under the pulse is underlined. The chord progression is probably the next strongest thing underlying your song. Even though you put all these elements and these parts and these instruments and these synthesizing over it and all that stuff, that feeling of that chord movement change will be one of the core pieces of your song that people respect. And there are no bad chord progressions. So when you pick a chord progression, it's really easy actually. You pick four chords, you pick three, you pick two. right? Because I could just do this. I could say A and I could do A again, right? 
and then I could do E and E again. Very common. A bar with A, a bar with A, a bar with E, a bar with E. Does that make sense? We're going to think in this class of basically a four bar cycle, and I'm going to be asking you to pick uh, either two, three, or four chords to play across that cycle. Kind of thing. That covers about 85% of music that we listen to right there. So, two, three, or four bars. I'm going through. Um, so, when we do this, what will usually happen <clears throat> is the accompaniment part will have these notes in the middle. The bass part will usually have the root or tonic note in it. So, it will usually be A, E, G, C. And the melody will move over the top on these. So, <clears throat> let us move over to Logic now and see if we can't program in this chord progression. Okay. That's the thing that I'm going to want you to follow here on Logic. I'm going to move kind of quick. Uh, let me just hide a bunch of these. Yes, and I'm trying to give me give me a second because I want to show you uh, to how to do them in a certain way. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my basic window here. I'm going to create a new track. I would like you to create one and one only. Okay, so hit the plus sign. Create yourself a new software instrument track. Create. <coughs> Raise your hand if you need me to slow down. When you created a new software instrument track, it automatically puts on a preset on it of this electric piano. Great. Let's leave the electric piano for now. Okay. I have picked with my uh, tools, I have picked the pointer tool, and then when I hold down the command key, I've asked it to give me the pencil tool. I would recommend doing that. So on this one right here, set it to pencil tool. Okay. I'm now going to hold down that command key so it turns into a pencil, not scissors like I was using last time. And I'm going to click right around measure one and I'm going to end up with my first region. This is a MIDI region, it's green. And I'm going to drag it to the start of measure five so it's a four measure long region. And then I'm going to double click it. And I should see down below, I can drag up this. This is the editor window. You can get there by clicking on these scissors. Okay, the top left here. And I can now see my notes down there. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Uh, probably so I can see the C2 to C3 range. I'm just going to drag this over a little bit so I have a little bit more space. I'm also going to hide the, the instrument over here so I don't need to see it. See if you can get yourself to that point. There, and I'm going to walk around and show. Can you reach over and help your neighbor if you're there? Some people, it's really easy, some people have never done this before. Raise your hand if you need more time. Anyone? Good. Got him caught up.
Okay, is everyone there? We're good to go. Great. Okay. So next thing I want you to do, uh, actually, let's let's cl click the scissors and close down the edit window down below. Make sure the drawer is closed too. You don't want all that stuff over there on the left. Okay. So you're just seeing this view. We want to know program in uh, the structure of our song before we start putting in notes. Did I delete my region? Yeah, I did. Sorry. Put my region back there. So I'm going to open this little right here, drawer right here, which shows the global tracks. These are tracks that apply across uh, all tracks. Okay, And they have things like the tempo of the song, how fast it's going to go, the key signature, but also the arrangement and the markers. So I want to go ahead and just have us start to put those in right now. If you right-click or control-click, if the right-click isn't working on your mouse, hit control. And we're going to hide tempo. We're going to hide signature. I want to have these arrangement and uh, marker windows up. And what we're going to do is in the arrangement window, we're going to go ahead and start to enter the sections of our song. Okay. And so if you hold down and get that pencil key, you should be able to click on verse. I just can't delete it because I've already created it once. If you hold down the pencil key and click around measure one, you should get a region. It looks like a region, only it's gray. It's probably only a measure long when you put it in. Go ahead and drag it out to measure 17. Double click on it or click once on it, and you can actually pick the sections. Right. It automatically gives you those sections. Okay. But let's go ahead and map out our song just so we get the basic idea of it. And I'm going to put the next pencil in at 17. I'm going to call that one chorus. I can zoom out here, right? Bring my chorus out to 33. Add the next one. We'll go back to a verse. I'm sorry. We need that chorus. They, they, I kind of move around like regions, but it's a little clunkier. Like right now, I'm kind of stuck there. Yeah. <coughs> Newton has bridge. Look at that. And we should be able to map out the form of our 96 major song, right? Raise your hand if you're there with me already. Faster than me in a mouse. Okay. Awesome. We need help, or are they just working on it? You need help? Are you able to help them? You want to help? Okay, now we've done that. We're going to now add our chord progression within this. And our chord, we're just, for this example, we're going to do one chord per measure. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here to where I've looped. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to add markers now. So you should have the marker track showing here. Okay, if you don't. Control or right click and show the marker track. Okay. And I'm going to again create the pencil. And putting markers in is kind of clunky too, like putting in the uh, sections. I'm going to go measure one. And it throws me a marker all the way to the end of my song. Okay. And uh, so I double click on it and I can say, uh, I'm going to call this A. I'm going to put a little M after it because it's actually A minor. Uh, hold down the pencil and then I click at the start of two and I can put in my E minor. Start of three, I can put in my G. And then start of four, I can put in my C. Now, what I might even consider doing here is I might do this. I might go, in fact, this might be a great way to do it, A, C, E. I might want to tell myself what those notes are right there so I can see them. When I'm working. What's that? Signature, if you right-click, just hide signature. Right? If you see signature, right-click on it. 
I think this might be a better way to do this. Let's try this. Go uh, E, G, B, G, B, D, C, E, G. That'll be a really nice way for you to always see the notes that you want to work with in that measure. See if you can get to that point there. I'm going to pause this. Okay, now we've got our chords. We've renamed them lowercase because it's just the actual notes in the chord. Uh, if it was the chord, it would be uppercase. I'm going to zoom out now, and for our basic song, for the most part, we're going to repeat the same chords over and 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 over again. Because not many number one hits have done that, so heck, we should be able to make a number one hit with the same three or four chords over and over and over and over and over and over and over. So to do that. Click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the second one, click on the third one, click on the fourth one. Hit copy, control C, move the, uh, the um, scroll bar to the start of major five, hit command V for paste, and hit it again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again. all the way up to major 97. I knew I'd have to show this twice. Here we go. Thank you. Please watch the recording. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Come here. Hold down the first one. We can't rubber band, unfortunately, up here. Hold down shift to click the second, third, fourth. Hit command C to copy. Drag the, uh, the um, scroll bar to measure five, one, 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 one. Hit paste. Control, that's command V for paste. Two, three, four, paste, 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 all the way to measure 97, and we're done. And you should now see this on your computer. Let me know how it goes. Third time. I knew this one would be hard. That's why we're doing it. There we go. Hold down. Click the first one, hold down shift, then click the second, the third, and the fourth. They should all be light gray. Copy, command V, C, sorry, command C. Click on major five, so that or move the scroll bar so it's right at the start of major five. Command V is paste. Paste it 96 divided by four times. Okay. Should now have this on your page. If you need help, please ask your neighbor. Now we've got this region. <clears throat> We're going to double click on it or click the scissors to open the editor for that particular region. So up here you can have multiple tracks. This is the track window. This is the editor window for whatever track you have selected. Okay, it allows you to work on just one track. Uh, you can minimize those, those markers and regions up here by clicking this. And you can also show and hide them down here. You see that? In fact, I recommend showing your, and you can use the right click down here, your marker window right down here. So you can see the chords, the notes in the chords you have going as you're working.
So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this A. Let's start with, uh, yeah, I think we need to start right there. Uh, let me get some sound here. Uh, we're going to start putting in the notes for the chords. And we're just going to put in pads right now. What's a pad? Does anyone remember? Long sustained. Long held notes. Okay. So I hold down. Uh, you'll see here that I have a second set of tools I can use. So I could have pointer and pencil up here, and I could have something else down here. Well, we want pointer and pencil down here, too. So I'm going to have the pointer and the pencil. Most of the time you're working in this mode, that's what you're going to want. I hold down the command key, and now instead of it putting in a region, it's going to put in a note. So I'm going to go put a note on A. How do I know that's A? Well, I'm going to have up my handy little thing that my teacher gave me. Right? And even rotate it 90 degrees. And I can see that A is the one in between the upper two of the three black notes together. Right there is an A. It doesn't tell me a logic unless I click on it. Then, and I hold it down, you see it says pitch, A2. Okay? Then I drag this just like a region. I'm going to drag it to the start, and I'm going to drag it out for the whole measure. Guess what the next note's going to be? Somebody, somebody put it right here in this marker for me. How nice of them. So I'm going to hold down the option key, and I'm going to drag this guy up. Sorry? Right. And I'm going to do that right across all four. Let's see if you guys can do all these. So my next one is going to be E, G, B, E, G, B. Okay. See if you can go ahead and do all those. Should end with something like this. <laughs> See if you can end up with that. You might end up with your E down below. Okay. Yes. So hopefully the audio is recording because if not, you have to do it visually. Okay. What we have here. Has anyone played the game Frogger? Yeah. yeah. Has anyone not played the game Frogger? Has no idea what I'm talking about. Okay. Frogger. Is a game where you have to like get across this freeway without getting hit and then you got to get across this river you got to hop on these turtles and then this log and this log and then the turtles and logs are moving so you got to wait for this log this turtle to come by before you can hop on does that make sense okay or you fall into these gaps okay i want you to think of that same idea here these are the logs we can hop on the letters that we've written on the top there everything else we're dead okay so if we step off a log as we go across we're dead each Voice that we have. Remember we talked about soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, right? Those are voices that will carry across. And it's built on the idea of having people singing and la 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 Stay in the same range. I don't go la 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 Right? It's very difficult to sing that. It's annoying. We have a case of the lazies with our frogs. Our frogs do not like to leap. They like to step. What does that mean? Step means... Move to the closest, closest note I possibly can and do as little as possible. Okay? Uh, leaps, we're going to save for the melody now and then for a point of interest. Okay? Uh, you don't want to overdo leaps. So I've got these three voices here, and then they all have to jump way the heck up there. Does that make sense? This is bad compositional style, and it's going to wear our frogs out. They all had to jump up here, and then they all had to jump back down, and they all had to jump back. This is called parallel motion, too. They all jump up, all three, they all jump down. Okay? We want to avoid that as much as possible. So what we can do is simply take, and we know that these are the logs we can hop on, and fortunately, because we can hear multiple octaves, 
we can just move the log down an octave, right? So we can take this B up here and move it down there. That makes sense? I can take this G here and move it there. What am I going to be looking for? I'm going to be looking for, look at this lazy, lazy frog. He doesn't even have to do a darn thing. In fact, he might want to start in this A. I'm so lazy, I'm just going to start there. Okay? I'm going to keep notes. If I can keep notes the same, I do it. If I can move them to the next closest note in the scale or in the next that's in the next chord, I'm going to do it. Does that make sense? See if you can all do that. My three voices are barely moving. And it'll sound like this. Okay. Part of what makes the Calvin Harris song sound interesting is, is the chords moving under notes staying the same. That's part. Why is this an accompaniment part? How do we know it's accompaniment? What do you mean by the middle? Like, like tone. It's not deep. Frequency is not deep. It's not high, right? It's in the C2 to C3 range. In there. Mine's a little high. It's, when you get up above <coughs> 3 3, it's getting high. Okay? If I'm doing this, it means my melody has to be way up there. Okay. My melody's going to have to be up above. We want to try to keep that accompaniment pretty tight together, the notes in the accompaniment, so that we have room for our lead and our bass below it. Otherwise, we're going to run out of space. Okay? We can usually get about five voices. Bass, three accompanying voices, and a lead. About five. Okay. Let's add the bass. Bass is really easy. For the most part, the bass will play the root note. So I'm going to put in an A. I'm going to try to. Put in an A. Put in a C, uh, E, G, and C. See if you can do that part. Sounds good, huh? Why? Because I'm not on the right note anyway. I got it. I'm on a G sharp. We're now actually going to drag these bass notes down an octave. Sense everyone? <laughs> See if you can get those bass notes in. The <laughs> bass notes, it's okay to jump a little bit more, by the way. Why? Because the frequencies are further apart. It's okay, it's, it doesn't sound as weird to go from this frequency to this frequency. So your song should learn look something like this. So. Okay, now we want to add the melody to this song, and uh, Daniel might help me a little bit uh, by playing his a few times, but I think it starts, if we come up here, uh, wh what's the first note? Is it C? Uh, G. G, that's right. Okay. Uh, and it's going to move every eighth note, so I can just take that and I go, I'm hitting Apple R to do that, and I'm going to grab all those, and then what's the second note? See where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. I'm going to move these down an octave just to keep them out of the way of my melody. Okay, and then I'm going to grab rubber band those and I'm going to drag them over. And then I'm going to move them to the right notes, right? Now, you, in his song, you'll see the melody doesn't exactly play the notes in the chords. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. But for right now, we just want to get the, the feeling of the song, okay? I think it goes, drops down there. And then I'm going to take those four, I'm going to option drag them over. Let's see. Okay. okay, and then I think he drops.
goes all the way down to the C, doesn't he? Yeah. We're just going to interfere with this, so I got to go drop that one down and not turn it on. See if you can get this. That's what I'd like you to do. I want you to walk in here on Tuesday with that up and running. If you are already at this point, then the next part of the assignment is going to be to write your own chord progression. And in your own chord progression, I want you to have three chords over the four bar cycle. You're going to build your song up this chord progression. There are no bad chords except for don't start on B. There's one bad chord. <coughs> don't start with B. Stay with white notes. Any, chord, any three chords work. You can play the same chord first and the second and then two different chords. That would make a very open uh, progression. You can play the same <coughs> chord first, chord two, chord three, and go back to chord one. That would make a closed progression. Now you can play the same chord first, different chord second, same chord again on third, and even a different chord on fourth. That would be a semi-open. Okay. So you can change whichever ones you want. Just pick the letters you like best. Okay. And avoid starting on B. If you have your own chord progression, I'd like you to come in Monday with a, with a minimum of it mapped out like this, with the chords listed here. Okay? With the notes listed here, the chords here. <coughs> you can stick in the bass. And if you want to screw around with melody, feel free. But what we're going to do <coughs> on Tuesday when we come in is start talking melody. Does that make sense? So, by tomorrow night, I want a picture uploaded of what I'm looking at right there. Meaning, I want to see your chords, I also want to see your arrangement, sorry. I want to see the, the markers in the arrangement, your chords in the arrangement, and the region <coughs> with bass, accompaniment, and some sort of lead in there if you can. Okay? Wait, just the four bars? Or? It doesn't, just the four bars. Just the four bars. Okay? Don't worry about, um, you know what, uh, just because we just got to the melody part, don't worry about the melody. Let's have the bass and the accompaniment part in your picture. Take a screenshot. Command, shift, command, four, spacebar. Gives you the screenshot. Command, shift, four, spacebar. I take the picture. I upload it into the assignment that is already. I hear people taking pictures already. Yeah. No, no, you can turn this one in. Oh. Okay. Melody over chords. Right here, this assignment. Upload a picture of your logic session with the following. A four-bar region with bass and accompaniment. Guys, don't worry about lead in this class, okay? Your chord progression and the marker track uh, and the song sections and the arrangement track. Well, it's going to be our own chord progression there, right? it, it, it can be. It doesn't need to be. You can use the Calvin Harris one. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and gosh knows why the picture isn't showing there. Uh, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can edit that and get the picture. It is? Or it's on my screen at least. Oh. The example picture is there? Is it the assignment Melody Over Chords? Melody Over Chords. Yeah, uh, I'm going to change the name a little bit here. See, I'm trying to catch you guys up to their class. Oh, we have to label it or basically mention it? No, I'll show you how to do that next time. So, if 
don't have uh, logic at home to use Ruby loops and other <coughs> that works.